Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Game Testing Unlimited. My name is Wilfred. So this is yet another video on the game called Opus Manum. Uh, it is a game that's uh, created a couple of years ago. I've got to play it recently, and I have a lot of fun with it. So. This video, I'd like to showcase to you the very last chapter that I've uh, managed to complete. So this is it, uh, the hardest of the of all the puzzles out there and the solution that I come up with. Now, by all means, this is not the best or the only solution that the um, that, that that is for the that is for the puzzle. Uh, there are many many solutions that anybody can come up with, and in fact, I'm going to walk through with you some of the thinking behind how some of these solutions come about. Uh, inspiration, kind of uh, you know, as I, as I play this game. But uh, you know, um, for for those who intend to play this game very soon or in the midst of playing it, a little bit of spoiler alert because I bring out all the puzzles uh, at one in one video. But for those who just like would like to. Uh, get understanding how this game plays like it's a good video to start with and uh, who knows you may want to just start a game and create a solution of your own now uh, so these are some of the you know um, story to it and I'm not going to go through those stories some of these are mini games as well I'm not going to go through them but uh, I will start with some of these um, solutions that I come up with so this one is called the mist of hallucination and some of them is really 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 cool so I need to create something like uh, like this pattern here and uh, I believe uh, this one is the air <laughs> I have to get used to this one uh, so it's the blue color just like sky so this is the air element I need to put it in this order and meanwhile I need to uh, have the this is lead by the way uh, so this guy here is called lead um, and then when I, when I combine two lead in this glyph here and this glyph is called glyph, glyph of purification combine two lead together I get iron and iron will put it here so in a way I need to make sure that uh, things are being combined into an iron and I need to combine the uh, the air in this way uh, so I just do a little bit step by step here one and three um, so let's go for it so I like the wheel I don't know why I'm addicted to the wheel. Uh, this guy here. I don't think wheel is the. Uh, it, sometimes it can be quite efficient because you don't need to reset the position of the arms. But uh, sometimes it could be quite expensive as well. Wheels are more expensive than the arm itself, of course. So the first one, I just uh, spin the wheel and meanwhile get this guy going. And then after that, I spin the wheel, uh, drop it in. I get the iron iron here from the. Uh, I got the tin. I think sorry, this is a tin. I think uh, from it. And then after that. Uh, I move the move these two together, and the uh, then you combine the, uh, the the air into the. So I need to move out a little bit first because otherwise you collide. Uh, and then I put it into the bits of it uh, as you can see, and then it combine this this one here. Now the last step is just to combine these two into the last product and become the puzzle itself. So uh, you see, one shot it combine everything. And then I release it and spin it to the end product itself. So after that, uh, it's a cycle. And you know you have to produce uh, six products uh, just, to, just to make sure that from a pro parallel processing point of view, at the end of the cycles, uh, you could spin back to the first uh, step as well. So everything get connected continuously, creating products after product after product. So uh, this is rather fun. I quite like it. Um, and, the, and the product itself is doing pretty all right, I guess. Um, it's, it's there about where the majority of people are doing uh you could of course improve a little bit of it without using the wheel maybe just an arm and so on and so forth i will play this game again uh, to to get some better scoring and so on and so forth so that's one of them another one is a timing crystal also very very nice uh this one here this one took me a while to get it but once you get it it's so beautiful that you just like you know there aren't really a lot of components to it just a few i uh, just uh two arm one wheel as well as a bit of like combining uh, mechanism and a little bit of track to run across that's it and you need you need to produce uh, something like this one which is the gold in the middle and salt on the side uh, and look this how they combine the, the line uh, it doesn't combine everything so there's nothing combining these two uh, salt or this this three in fact so it is basically uh, you have a center wheel uh, that connect like this and then you have the outer one that connect into the inner one through only the uh, the, 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 the apex all right, or, or vertex and then after that of course outside is all connected so um, I, for this one I'm just going to run it so you kind of get the idea of how it looks like I'm not going to go step by step because as you run it you can't know so basically just creating the middle part first and after that I create the outer part uh, I have to make sure it doesn't bang on any of these things here then I need to start combining the, the outer part and then connecting one by one of it 
Uh, and there you go, voila, uh, that, that works out pretty nicely. And you could like watch it for six cycles and see how the thing goes. Very, very beautiful. At the end, it is probably one of my best solution from a simplistic point of view. It looks very clean and simple. Uh, I, I love it. Um, and, and, and how this arm trying to fit into all these things and how to combine together without hitting any of this arm area because there's a limit to what this one can, how this one can rotate and so on. Uh, and, and this is another constraint as well. Uh, make sure I don't hit onto any of those area. So uh, overall, a very, very elegant design, uh, a very good use of the spinning itself uh, and so on. Yeah. Um, and, and the good thing about using a wheel on this part is that I don't need to reset the arm position uh, so it makes things a little bit faster. Uh, that's a reason. All right. So that is, uh, I think I've done pretty well. Cost wise is, you know, on the low side, cycle wise is uh, almost there and I don't use up that much area. So yeah, that is a very nice game here. My favorite uh, of all, I think. And then the other one is a uh, Voltaic uh, Coil, uh, which it's, it's not too bad as well. I think a bit slow on the slow side, but um, it's kind of weird. If you look at all this graph, uh, people either get it or they have something quite creative. So anyway, I need to create a train like this one here, uh, connect all the elements. And now these are, what are these one? Uh, let me explain a little bit. The red one is a fire. And the one in the middle is called lead. So I need to connect the lead and this is salt. So I need to connect the salt with two lead and a fire. And after that, um, you know, connect like that. So usually when it comes to this sort of pattern, you try to identify which is the repeatable um, kind of a product. So the repeatable product would be uh, this part here. Okay. And after that, you merge this one here and merge this one here. So in a way, you kind of like identify what are the uh, sort of like repeatable product in, in a sense so that you can keep adding things in it. Uh, and I use two wheels. I like the wheels. You guys know that. And the uh, now I, I only have the two fire and one lead. So the lead, of course, need to spin on up and down to, to fill up this guy. So I need to go up, go down, go up, go down, go up, go down. And now I have the, uh, the, the fire as well. And the fire... Uh, I need to alternate between the fire and salt. So I will spin the fire first, spin the salt, spin the fire and spin the salt. To create a salt, I need to touch the fire with the glyph, which is a glyph of calcification. So I need to uh, have alternate cycle. In one cycle, I spin the fire. On the other cycle, I spin the salt. So in order not to touch this glyph all the time, I create a mechanism whereby I use a bit of like a wheel kind of movement here, as you can see later. Again, I'm going to just press run. I'm not going to do a step-by-step -step because um, uh, yeah, I think you'll get it. So so basically, as you can see, uh, I've combined the thing together and I push it like this one and I create another one which is giving you the um, the fire, alternate between fire and uh, and and the um, and the salt. Now the trick of this one is how the thing are connected. Uh, as you notice that it is like that zigzag kind of thing. So I need to make sure I've got something in the middle that does something like that. Uh, and I cannot overlap this too, so I need to put it side by side, keep pushing it. And uh, and the other connectivity is through this guy here, the two connector uh, on the top and bottom. So that's it, I've got a pretty nice um, thing done up here. Uh, again, it's kind of weird, uh, not the fastest, not the cost, most cost effective and not the best use of area. I mean, in, in the future, I may want to do something different, like perhaps like, you know, creating uh, instead of wheel, maybe I do arm instead. Maybe that could be a better choice instead of using all this wheel and fancy stuff. But I kind of like it, um, kind of fun. All right, so that was the uh, the voltaic coil. Uh, the next one is unstable uh, compound. I think this one is rather fun as well. I'm, I'm like, majority of people land on this course, so I'm all right. I think majority of people land on this cycle as well. So I, I use up a little bit more area than, than others, I think. But uh, now, ultimately, I need to create something like that. Uh, this is that you have three fire here. And the uh, and three salt uh, on the side plus three other salt on on the end side uh, apex of it. So uh, they only provide you with two fire. So naturally, you need to convert the fire into salt, uh, which is what this uh, this guy is using the glyph of calcification. Um, now the one very unique thing is that this connector is different from the connector here. It's not just a normal connectivity like the glyph of bonding. You have to use the glyph of triple bonding to create the three color wire in between. So you have the gold color, the red color, as well as the silver color. So again, I'm going to run this through. Uh, how I'm going to do it is that I'll create, I'll create the, uh, the bonding first, right? So you can see all this bonding being done up. And after that, I start to uh, add the salt over one side, move it across first because of space constraint, and then add the rest of it inside. Yeah, so it's very beautiful. 
Um, and, and because of the space constraint, I need to make sure that it doesn't land on anywhere that I, I have a problem with, uh, you know, hitting somewhere. So I need to creatively move the wheel around here and there uh, to make sure we, we can move this guy out a bit, move the in and then pick the last one. Right. So these are the, uh, the product I'm making. Very therapeutic to look at it. It's um, very nice. I think looking back, I could improve it somehow. Uh, maybe use another mechanism, but yeah, it is what I have today. Uh, I may do it again. I mean, you know, just to get a different kind of like a perspective. Now, the last two one is the curious lipstick. It's probably one of the hardest one. This one, I think. Yeah, I need to create something like that. Probably one of the harder one. It's the most complex one. Now, how it works is that I only have two salt, but I have to create all these things here, which is kind of like a uh, crazy and uh, I have to create something called the uh, if you see the last video uh, there's something called the Mors and uh, Vitae uh, which is more like life and death I think Mors is like death uh, Vitae is like life and, and to create that I need to land two sorts in using the glyph of uh, Animismus to create two atoms uh, into uh, Vita and, and, and Mors now the fact that this one only take in Mores and not Vita means that I have to discard the Vita. So in order to do that, I have this glyph of uh, disposal. Just drop it there, destroy it. So one of it I use, one of that destroy. Now these are two parts to it. The first part is to connect the uh, the Mores together into a into a circle like this one. Another one is actually pretty complex. I need to uh, create this uh, this structure whereby there's a bit of like um, you know um, I think these are. Uh, water. Uh, no, this is not water. These are probably earth. I can't remember what is it. And the fire as well. Uh, basically, the green one plus the fire plus two salt. So to do that, uh, I have to use a spinner. It's called the wheel. Uh, it's the Van Bolo's wheel. Uh, I would decide how to transmit it. I can actually use a uh, salt with the wheel. I can create this uh, matching color. So remember, last time we have this glyph of uh, glyph of. Um, uh, a calcification which is to convert any element into salt this is the reverse of it creating salt from you know into any element as per the wheel so it's kind of fun you have to spin the wheel correctly so there are two parts to it one is to create this part another one is create this part and after that I join them together as a last step and because the fact that I only have two salt and you can do a little bit of parallel processing here so the first part you can start using this wheel to build this part and while this guy is building up I can use this wheel to create the second part and uh, to do that, let me just slowly walk you through the steps so they can understand what is happening here. All right. So first step, first step, first, uh, I need to create the. Um, I have two sort here, and I got the two sort here, and then the two sort dump into this guy to create the V time more. But at the same time, I'm creating the second part of the uh, the product. So this one become a green thing here. Now I've got a more and a and a Vita. Vita, I need to throw it away. Uh, so you can see that um, Vita threw it away there. That one is drop it there, and while the more go into one part here to start creating the uh, the circle. Now I use the 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 the, the arm six to create this guy. You see later, it keep rotating it. Uh, it's kind of fun. Meanwhile, the 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 green is there. Uh, so you see the thing get destroyed. So the green get pulled to one side, and meanwhile I start to create another set. All right, and then now I do another green. So now it's a green. Uh, this part is a green. All right, so this is green. And after that, uh, I can continue doing that. And this guy keep flipping, uh, rotating it. You see that? It rotate, keep rotating. And this guy is still forming the second part, which is salt plus the uh, the fire coming in as well. Join the salt and the fire. And the last one is just the salt that going in. So I got this structure right. This structure is done. It's just a bit of binding that need to be done as well. Done is binding now. So the last step is to spin the two together, and to uh, to combine them. There you go. So I use two arm. Uh, I use a long arm because I need to transfer a longer distance. I could use the um, you know track to move this guy, but it's slower. Uh, this one move like you know one step you can move uh, one two three uh, kind of like four five kind of like steps across. So it's much more efficient. And after that done, I drop it to here and done. All right. So just going back to the first step. Uh, this guy is forming up. As you can see. Uh, things are being destroyed and this guy is uh, forming up to there and then that drop to here that's it uh, that's second product all right so it's very very nice so uh look this that i do this one first and do that one i do this one i do left and right left and right uh, so a little bit of parallel processing 
building two uh, parts simultaneously. It's really hard. It took me uh, quite a long time to come up with this particular solution. But I'm pretty satisfied with the fact that uh, things are done up. And also notice that this is a rather large area. Uh, you need a bit of space in order to make it happen, I think, because otherwise uh, you will keep colliding with the existing mechanism via the, um, the element, atom and so on, right? So this is the, the second last one. And the very last is the grand finale. I think the last one is not as complex complex as this one. This one took me a long time to make. And the last one is the uh, the Universal Solvent, which is the very last game. And uh, I did pretty well. The cost rise is pretty low, but of course it's not as fast, but the area also pretty pretty well as well. So it's a bit of constraint. You can put a lot of money in and try to get things done and so on and so forth. But uh, yep. So now this is uh, actually, you know what, this is rather complex as well, but it's not as you know, structure as the other one. This one is complex because the fact that I need to create almost everything uh, that I, I need to I've no run off, right? So I need to create uh, a, a Vita and Vita and Morse, which is the life and death, I guess. Um, and then I need to use a tin as well, which is the one in the middle. Uh, meanwhile, I need to put a sort around it. And also I have to have all four elements in this order. And then from a binding wise, it doesn't connect everything. You have to connect like just uh, the line here. So it's one straight line here plus the outer one, but those, there's no inner connection and plus the salt around it. Now this design is probably not the best design I can think of because I think uh, there's a little bit of redundancy of steps as you can see later. But I want to keep things simple first, get things sorted and then after that improve the, the, the version it is. Um, I'm going to step through it really, really uh, fast here and yeah, you'll get the idea of how this thing works. All right. So now initially, this is the one I can dump the uh, lead in to create a tin and tin is what this one is. Um, so I need to create this one. And also meanwhile, I create the, 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 the Vita and Morse as well. Uh, so the, the up and down arrow. So drop it in, I create a, create, created the, uh, the middle part and the middle part will then go into to here. And now uh, meanwhile, I'm already get ready to create the rest of the element. So this one, the, the Vita go up, the Morse is coming in as well. Number six is the one that does all the heavy lifting uh, to, to move. Now, of course, there's, uh, uh, I could improve by having an extra arm somewhere or mechanism whereby I can parallel process a little bit. But anyway, uh, so I've got the middle part done up. So now it is for six to keep getting all the element in. And I need to make sure that the right element at the right order is done up. So now it's just a matter of building up the middle part, uh, which I've done it pretty well. Now, the the, uh, the only thing that is probably unfortunate is that I created unnecessary uh, bonding between some of the elements whereby here I don't have it. And you can see this one is to cut it off. So later on, I'll, I'll have to trim it uh, by not connecting some of these things. Uh, it is almost like a necessary evil kind of thing, but I probably have a, I will, I'll come up with a better design in the future, uh, not to have that extra step. So I've done that, and now it's a matter of cutting cutting this part, and then rotating it and cutting this part, and then move it to somewhere. I can start building the next bit, which is the uh, the sort in it. All right, so the sort then go into the end of it, um, and um, and then be, I use a wheel so that I don't need to reset position, and then after that, uh, that's it. Uh, let me just run it. So that's done, right? So again, I just build the middle part first. I think this. The, the initial part is the slowest, but after that is a lot of like, you know, uh, efficiency being run there. All right, so that is the very last uh, clip of the whole entire game, the final puzzle. Uh, still have a lot of room for improvement, but it's a very nice uh, structure because it used all the four elements plus the salt, plus the plus the uh, the Vitar and Morse, plus the uh, the tin or one of the elements being transmuted or glived or whatever you call it uh, into it. So yeah, well, thank you so very much for watching. I've uh, I've really enjoyed playing this game. I think it's one of those games that um, it looks complex, but. Um, but you get it. I spent around 20 hours playing this game and completed it. I'm sure you guys can do better than me. Uh, but I kind of like want to, you know, sometimes think about something more efficient, sometimes sometime think about something more uh, complex. And uh, I usually start with something in mind first to see like, you know, what I should be. And after that, um, I'll start to build my solution accordingly. Uh, but having said that, I mean, you know, there's there's many ways to create a solution. You don't have to use a wheel. You don't have to use some of these things and you can just do other clever tricks uh, as, as it in fits. Huh? Uh, so, it, so thank you very much for watching. And uh, there's also the very last element whereby I could do some leaderboard kind of like solution here, which I would, uh, there are four parts to it by the way, I could start playing uh, as an end game or I would take a break and do other things first. Uh, but yeah, uh, see you next time. Goodbye.